In our backyard, we have a grapevine, and when it's grape season, our grandkids love to come over and check on the progress of the grapes. They'll see them growing, and they'll ask if they can have one, and I'll typically tell them it's not time yet, they'll be sour, but they've got to try anyway. So they'll pull a grape off of the grapevine, and they'll try it, and they'll make a face and, and spit the grape out, or they'll swallow it, but it, it, it happens just about every time they come over. Finally, there will be a day when the grapes are just about ready and the grandkids will grab a grape and they'll, they'll bite into it and they're starting to make the face like it's sour and then it's like, oh, this is pretty good. Well, that's when I know it's time to harvest those grapes because at that point, when the grapes are ready, you've probably got about a week before the birds will just strip that vine completely because grandkids aren't the only things that check grapevines, it's the birds as well. Now, Jesus has uh, a comment when he, after he's been talking with the woman in Samaria and his, his disciples come to him and they're kind of questioning about some of the things that are going on. And one of the things they want to know is, is, have you had anything to eat? And so in John chapter 4 and verse 34, Jesus says this, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Do you not say four more months and then the harvest? I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for the harvest. Well, that's pretty impressive when you think about it. Jesus is the Son of God, and yet he knows he still answers to his Father. And he knows that his time here on earth is very limited and it's growing shorter as the days go by. And so he just says, I've got work to do. I've got to complete this work that the Father has given to me. And then he makes the transition over to the work that we have to do. And he uses this uh, illustration of the harvest. And, and he talks about the fact that we'll say about four more months and it's time to harvest. And he says, open your eyes. They're ready now. What's he talking about? Obviously, when it comes to crops, uh, the time that they're ready for the harvest is, is pretty obvious. But I don't think Jesus is concerned about wheat here or grapes or any other type of food crops. I believe the point he's trying to get across is this. We have a limited amount of time here on earth to influence people and to help people. And... And sometimes we are tempted to put that help and influence off. And by that, I mean there are times in people's lives where their hearts are probably receptive and ready to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. And yet maybe that time is not good for us. And so we think, well, we'll wait, wait for it. A lot of parents do this with their children when their children are growing up. And, and we parents all know that we have an obligation to teach our kids about Jesus and about God. And yet we get busy and sometimes we, sometimes we just put that off. Or sometimes we put the task off onto somebody else. And, and we just trust them to do it the right way. You send them to Sunday school and you expect them to get the right information. Some parents don't even do that. They just send them to school and they just let them learn what they're going to learn. Our schools are excellent. Don't get me wrong. Many of our schools are excellent. But the things that they're going to teach our kids about, about, uh, about God is, is very restricted and very minimal. And so very often what they're going to learn in school is that there is no God. And that somehow we're just uh, uh, some sort of a a result of a great accident, an explosion of gases that somehow formed this world and then formed uh, the little one-cell creatures that somehow grew into everything from trees to people and everything in between. And, and then we're surprised when our kids grow up and they don't have uh, a good moral foundation because they believe that they're their own uh, moral standard that there is no God, so they'll be the ones that, that decide on what to do. And so sometimes 
we need to look at our own families because from the time our babies are born or very shortly after that, the fields are ripe unto the harvest. And, and we have a duty before God to do the work that He has put us here for, to train them up in godly things. I've heard some parents actually say, well, I didn't want to teach them anything about God. I wanted them to find out for themselves and make up their own minds. I don't understand that. Because essentially what we're doing is we're defaulting everything about God to Satan, who's not going to give a very accurate view, is he? That's why I say though our schools are good, they're pretty much prohibited from teaching anything about God unless they're a private institution. And so they're typically going to teach a godless science. And at some point, uh, our kids are, are off completely. As far as this idea of letting our kids just discover, would, would you do that with, with uh, other items that, that, uh, or other areas that, in which their safety is, is so dependent? Are you going to let them discover what they need to know about electricity and hot stoves and traffic just by experimenting on their own with what they want to do? No parent in their right mind would do that. As a matter of fact, a parent that would allow his child just to wander out into traffic uh, when, they're, when they're little is probably going to be brought up on charges if anything serious happens to that child. But it's not the physical we need to be concerned most about, it's the spiritual. We need to understand that someday our children are going to kneel before God on Judgment Day. And they're going to give an account for what they've done. Have we helped prepare them for that day? Have we recognized the fact that every day has a new opportunity to help with the harvest of, of, of our children and their, and their souls? Are, are we giving them the information that we think is important? They're going to get plenty of information away from home. And they're, they've got good minds, so they'll be able to process that information and come to a rational conclusion. But how can they come to a rational conclusion if they don't have complete information? And so if you're not recognizing the fact that when Jesus is talking about the fields being ripe unto the harvest, sometimes he's talking to we parents about our children and how we need to prepare their hearts for that harvest. And again, sometimes he's talking about our friends. I don't know how many times I, I have uh, come across somebody, whether I was uh, involved with the profession of preaching or, or before that time or now after that time, now that I'm retired. And, and, and I can tell that somebody is interested in learning more about, about uh, the Bible or about God or about Christ. But it may not come on a convenient day for me and so I put it off a little bit. Now it's not a good time. Four more months and then that'll be a good time. But just like the grape harvest, it has a very limited window to where you can actually pick those ripe grapes before something comes in and steals those grapes. Very often you have a very limited time to be able to share the good news with, with those who you have the opportunity to. And if you wait too long, you might find that somebody steals their soul. Satan and, and his minions are very good at, at uh, grasping people uh, when they're at a difficult stage of life, when they're the, at their most vulnerable. Very often people are searching and yet they don't know exactly how to go about that search. We can give them the tools that they need. We don't have to tell them everything they need to know, but we can encourage them to read the Word of God. We can help them with their studies if they have questions, and we can sit down and examine the questions they have together. It, it will help us as well. There have been times in my life, and I suspect in your life, that, that you have thought you knew something pretty thoroughly about a Bible subject, only to find out that you were wrong. And it wasn't until you sat down and really dug into the scriptures that you found that out. Or somebody brought it to your attention so that you were able to begin your search on that particular topic. When Jesus talked about the fact 
that, that his father had given him work to do and that he had to finish that work. He wasn't just talking about himself and his responsibility. He went on to connect that with our responsibility. We have a time here on earth. None of us knows how long it will be exactly. But we do know there are certain things that we need to do. And one of the most important things, as a matter of fact, the most important thing we will ever do is to make sure that our life is right with God. And then after that, we can start helping others to help them uh, as, they, as they try to make sure that their life is right with God also. But the fields are ripe under the harvest only for a short time. And when that time is past, either the field goes fallow and the grain is spoiled or the crop is spoiled, or something comes along and steals it before... Uh, it can be saved for good use. Are the fields ripe unto the harvest in your life and in the lives of those that you know? I suspect if you look around very far, you're going to find that they are and that you have some opportunities. My encouragement to you today is to make the most of those opportunities. And just as Christ encouraged us all, we need to open our eyes because I believe by doing so, we're going to discover that there are fields at this very moment that are ripe unto the harvest. So it's time for us to get to work, isn't it? While we have the time to still do that work. That's the message for today. I hope it gives you something to think about. But until next time, I pray that God will richly bless you as you seek to serve Him to the very best of your ability.